welcome to the first installment of what a little series what I call the Rifleman's Corner. What is this series going to be? Um, it's going to be several videos um, that you can use if you're a fresh recruit or already um, a more experienced soldier in the Swiss military where I go through some of the tips and tricks that I learned or that I learned from other experienced uh, people to um, kind of deal with the issues you might face as a Swiss militiaman. There are some issues that arise that other people don't have to deal with other militaries. But um, we found a way. We always did and we always will. The other people that might be interested in those videos are perhaps people from the collector market outside of Switzerland. There are some things about the Swiss weapon systems, the Swiss gear, that you don't necessarily see or learn just from pictures or um, videos. Um, and I would like to share this knowledge that I and other experienced men and women gathered over the years having to deal with that stuff. So if you would like to see more of that, there will be more coming. Now let's get into the video about the GT90, the Swiss load bearing equipment. Welcome to my video about the current issue load bearing equipment of the Swiss military. Um, this video, I'm not going too much into the history of this equipment. What I'm going to do is first I will show you what you are being issued with in the Swiss military, explain you um, what you get, what we usually put in there according to the SOPs of the units I was in. Then I'll show you um, a quick rundown how we set that up, how it works to um, put all those, those uh, pouches and the whole system together. And then at the end I will show you what I have in my current load bearing equipment, what I carry with me and how I changed it up a bit to actually make it work. So there I made a few small changes, I uh, changed my setup a little bit and I will go into all of that. All right, so first thing, we, first thing we'll do is I will grab my body's load bearing equipment that's currently set up in a way uh, how you actually get it issued to you. I will explain it to you and then we will go on. All right, now I'm, right now I'm wearing my body's load bearing equipment and it is set up in a way as you get it issued to you in the Swiss military. So I will uh, just get rid of my rifle real quick and then I'll show you how and what you carry in that load bearing equipment. All right, so first up, this load bearing equipment consists of three major um, components. First, we have the chest straps or the yoke of the system. Then we have the load carrying belt. And the third, um, the third part is basically several, which is the pouches that you hook actually onto your belt. All right, all right. For the pouches, let's just see what we have. We have in total four pouches. We don't get more, we don't get less, four it is. We have two ammo pouches, one on the right, one on the left side, and they are not unilateral, they are, um, um, they are fixed in place on the left and the right. Then we have a water bottle pouch, that's usually on the firing hand side, and we have a gas mask carrier, which is usually on the non-firing side. In, let's just go into what we actually carry in there. Um, of course, in the water bottle pouch, we have the water bottle, which is quite simple. This is the current issue water bottle. Um, you can see we carry it uh, always with a canteen cup and I currently have uh, some uh, duct tape wrapped around it that I usually always do that to kind of always have at least some duct tape with me. I carry more in my field pack and in my uh, little field kit that I always carry with me but that's at least I have always something. Now you can see you also have this uh, MBC lid that you can open up to actually use um, use the bottle with the gas mask on that you can bring, bring through um, the gas mask as well. Now, All right. Carrying the bottle in the pouch, um, I always carry them lid down. That has um, two major reasons. As you can see, the pouches are all kind of flappy. They flap around a lot. And when carrying it um, lid down, it's easier for it to insert into the pouch because it kind of guides itself in there. So it's, uh, you don't have to like look around and try to uh, mash in your, um, your canteen into your pouch. The other reason why I do that is um, water free always freezes from the top when it's cold, especially in Switzerland, sometimes it gets cold here. Um, when, you, when, uh, when it freezes, it freezes from the top, meaning if you carry it lit down, it freezes in the bottom of the water bottle and you can actually still drink out of it. If you carry it lit up, it freezes the lid shut and then yeah, you have to kind of try to uh, warm up your water bottle, which can be an issue sometimes. All right, in the gas mask carrier, what we carry in there, obviously the gas mask. Once we have it, open it up, 
and pull the gas mask out. Now inside here you can, it, it's kind of difficult to show it to you while I wear the rig, but in here is a polymer stiffener, it's kind of like a large polymer cup. And there's, the, there's a main slot, a main compartment in there for the gas mask of course. And there's um, three little slots in the middle um, for those uh, injection pens that you can jam into your leg when your MVC suit fails. And um, there's uh, space for two bottles of uh, decontamination powder. And what we usually also carry in there is a few um, booklets of that um, marking, um, marking paper that you can uh, stick onto your uniform and your rifle, which um, is kind of to show you if there's um, chemical agents being used in the area, then they mm. turn a different color. Now the two ammo pouches. Um, you can see we only have two of them, and they are actually side-dependent, side so we have a left side and a right side. This is majorly because we have um, a connection piece that goes like a little um, gearing that connects to the front strap and through the diagonal back strap. So uh, you kind of have to have them on the correct side. On the left one, we also have a little metal hook where you can hook in all kinds of stuff like your gloves and whatever. But actually it is meant to carry your helmet. In the back of the Swiss uh, issued ballistic helmet, there's a little D-ring and it's kind of just easy to carry it that way if you're currently not wearing it. You can just hook it in there and it's not getting in your way. Exactly. Now what do we carry in those pouches? Well, the Swiss infantry is, is, is currently issued with 20 round magazines for the Sturmgewehr 90. So we carry 20 round magazines. Now, um, you can see, you, as you can see, you can couple those magazines together. There's, um, currently in my units, the SOP always was to couple uh, usually two together and at very max three magazines. If there's more than three, it's kind of like an issue. It gets super wide and it's kind of just awkward to carry. But then um, for me, what I always say is couple together two and have one just loose in there. It's just easier to put them in and out of the pouch. Three together, it fits in there. Four just barely fits in. But um, even with three together, it's already kind of like an, just a bother to get it out. So usually to uh, just be fast with my reloads. And not that you're super fast with this rig anyway but um, I usually just kept them in with two, two coupled together and one loose. As you can see, as I put this in, it's kind of a little deep in there, which means we have roughly a small fist size space left in there. Now, as you can see, there's only two pouches we carry. Um, it always depends how many magazines you carry in the exercises. Sometimes you get more, sometimes you get less. We usually always said, well, at least six magazines on you and one or two in the rifle. So. But sometimes we didn't get that many, so we had to just make do with what we had. You know, we get into the issue that we uh, don't have the full combat loud yet. We have the magazines, yeah, but what's with the smoke grenades, the hand grenades, the um, flashbangs? Sometimes you have some sort of spotting scope or rangefinder. Where do you put all that stuff? That's a major, major, one of the major issues with this rig. Now, what we could, what we sometimes had to do was take the smoke and hand grenades and put them on top of the magazines or below them which is kind of obviously an issue when you put them on top or on the bottom and you want to use that stuff or use the magazines below them. You have to take them out, take out the mags, put it back in. It's, uh, it's kind of a nightmare. All right, now let's take this rig off. We have two buckles, one in the chest, a sternum strap and the main buckle that we can undo and take it off. As you can see, then total six connection points from the shoulder straps, from the yoke to the belt two back straps in the back, two diagonal and back straps and the front straps. Now, obviously this system predates Molly in the sense that um, when this was developed and uh, subsequent and um, afterwards adopted, Molly was not yet that universal standard as it is today. I mean, during that time, every, especially in Europe, every um, country had their own thing. Uh, kind of their own attachment system for their uh, rigs. The Germans had their Lochkoppel, the French and the British had their own stuff. And of course, the Americans had a, quite a few systems during the Cold War that they went through rather quickly. And in the end, of course, developed Molly, which is the universal standard nowadays. Um, kind of, there's a few points, of course, about this rig, the pros and the cons of this particular one. Obviously, the con is just there's not enough space. You only get issued four pouches and you can't carry all your stuff well. So we kind of have to make do sometimes. You will later on see how I um, fix that problem. Some of it is like very well known 
um, hacks in the Swiss military that do a lot of people and some things is just something I did myself to kind of improve this whole thing. Now um, that's uh, one major issue. The other issue I have especially with the pouches is not the closure. I actually like this, this closure and the flap. Yes it's not very fast but it's durable, it doesn't break and it protects your gear really well. It doesn't get wet, it doesn't get dirty and you don't lose much or especially if you close them back, back up you don't lose anything. The problem I have with the pouches is that unless you have the stiffener in the gas mask carrier, all those pouches are flappy, they have no structure in them, which makes it hard, especially if they're empty, to put stuff in there, kind of when you're not looking, and or during the night when you don't really see it. And closing up the lid gets is just not that easy. If it had some kind of stiffener, as for example the US Ellis magazine pouches have, they have like those polymer straps in there, I believe, that kind of stiffen up the whole pouch makes it way easier to um, open and close the pouches. But this closure system itself would be fine if the pouches would be more stiff. And those are the major issues I have with the rigs. Now the, pro, the pros of the, of the rig is there is, it has the capability to carry a lot more if the military would actually issue you more pouches. But the capability would be there. Now the other pro is, uh, be, as I said with the pouches before, it protects your gear relatively well. So um, that's not an issue. Now um, the next pro or the last pro of this rig is quite comfortable. As you can see, it's, you're quite well supported. You can carry a lot of weight, relatively comfortable. Um, the back is free, so it doesn't really interfere with a backpack or anything. You have some people who always complain about the metal buckles that they get in the way or anything. But all in all, especially with the backpack, this is very comfortable. You can load that up to the brim and carry it really comfortably. The, just the back straps, the yoke itself, is padded, so it's actually quite comfortable. But it's not padded in a way that's actually um, get in the way for shouldering the rifle. And so I think this is like the ideal, like this yoke is ideal. They had so much right with this, they just messed it up with the issuing of the pouches. All right, so now let's take this apart, put it back together to show you how to set it up, and then we'll go on. Okay, so now we're here on the tabletop and um, let's look at how to set up and how to work with the GTA 90, the Swiss load bearing equipment. So as you have seen, there are three major components, the belt, the yoke, the shoulder straps and the pouches. And let's first take a look at the belt itself. And as you can see here, um, here you can see a little bit better as I mentioned before there's several parts of the belt we have the main belt then the little strap of velcro with this strap of velcro you can basically adjust the length of the belt make it wider or closer and what you want with the uh, length of the belt is basically have it long enough that um, it uh, that the weight of the rig is mostly on your hips but and we have uh, the velcro on both sides of the belt, so on both buckles. So that's super easy to adjust, that's not a problem. What uh, really is more important are um, the hooks, the attachment hooks. <clears throat> Let's, and here we can see this with the example of um, the back straps of the yoke, really easily how that works, how you mount those. They have these um, hooks from both the top and the bottom, and they hook into that sewn in piece of fabric on the belt and that prevents them from moving somewhere they shouldn't move. All right, and um, how we uh, loop through the buckles, they're the same as uh, the buckles for the front straps and we look at that later because I already taped those down here. Now, um, all right, for the pouches, how you want to mount those, those mount all the same way also with those hooks. And um, yeah, for the positioning you want them uh, basically in a way that you can still go prone but um, if you only have the four pouches you want them in a way that you can also put your hands flat to your side that's how we did it in military of course if you have your own setup with different kinds of pouches or different amount of pouches you do it however you see fit all right now um yeah for the gas mask carrier he, he's a little bit special he has those um this gas mask carrier has those sort of almost like molly straps um, I think those are technically for the backpack or they're meant for the backpack just like the double pouches that you will later on see and um, but 
we never used them on the backpack we always had them on the kit so um i'm not certain why um the gas mask carrier has those extra strap that just loop we just lop, loop them over the belt through that loop and then close the buckles down on the bottom of the pouch and we left them like that gives a little bit more stability but doesn't really do much because it's still mainly holding on with the hooks anyway all right yeah and that's that and the same thing of course with the bow both of the mag pouch same thing just hook them into your belt right that's that now let's look at the straps how we mount those all right <clears throat> now um you can see um on the mag pouches that that here is the left one you can see the left one is the one with the little hook here and um, it has two loops two almost like d-rings attached to it and the right one obviously has the diagonal one on the other side because it's on the other side of the belt but um what you want is take the front strap and loop it through that and take the diagonal back strap and loop it through that one that way you basically have tension or support on most of the rig <coughs> All right, so let's do that real quick. Let's start with the dia with uh, the diagonal back strap. That's easiest. That's uh, very easily recognizable. It has um, the diagonal back strap has this polymer buckle, and those tend to be um, very easy to come off. At least the ones I have seen, they open up uh, by themselves rather easily. So I really advise you to tape them shut. So what you do is you um, grab the loop. You loop it from the back side, loop it through the back side of the pouch, and loop it or put it through. Let's see, put it through the buckle. And you see, it's just a regular buckle, you just set it through. Of course, I have the correct position already marked here. And you just push that through and push it down. Once you are at that point where you have it pushed down and tensioned to the correct height, you can just fold it over itself and tape it shut with some regular tape. Now, I would um, advise you to um, do that with a body, it's easier that way to adjust the height. If not, you just have to um, take it on and off again. But if you have some bodies who can help set you that up, it's the easiest of the way, it's, it's the fastest way of doing it. Now let's see at the, how we um, mount the front buckle. That's also not very difficult. We again, just loop it from the back. We loop it from the back through the straight buckle or through the straight um, D-ring. Just loop it through. Now um, we have this little um, loop with the um, buckle that is meant for those um, for those old style, almost like haversack backpacks. We never got them issued, but they also never removed those buckles from the straps. So you can remove them if you like to. We just always had to leave them, um, but those really don't do anything at all anyway so they also don't really get in the way it's because they're not very large and what you do you also loop it through that as well so it doesn't get tangled up anywhere and then first you um go through that little d-ring of the buckle then through the buckle itself fold it back over and if it's still long enough fold it or like put it through the d-ring again to secure it so it doesn't come off again or not as easily at least Put it through, put it underneath the buckle. Now again, I marked the correct length already. So let's see where we are right here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Longer, all right. Now here, it's important the buckle has those little metal knobs you need to get past those. And sometimes, depending on how fresh your um, straps are, you have to push down quite hard. Once you are at that point, we can again push it through that D-ring of the buckle. 
slide it through. And at this point, we can then proceed and tape the whole buckle, preventing it from coming loose again. All right, now that I have shown you how to set up the rig as you get it issued, let's look at mine, how I changed it up. Um, just a word to that, I changed it up in a way that everything on here is actually issued material. You just have to kind of organize it. I don't say steal it, um, but you may tactically acquire it or um, you may uh, borrow it from a friend, especially if you currently are um, in a Swiss um, vehicle unit and you have a good friend and usually it's best when he's not in the same unit and you don't have um, repetition courses at the same time. You can ask him to borrow some of that stuff that's on there, use it, and then when you're done, give it back to him and maybe borrow your stuff to him. All right, now let's first again get rid of the rifle. Let's get into the rig itself. All right, now the first thing you see, I do have a little different setup with the pouches. Now, first off, I have in total four ammo pouches, which I had to kind of do something with it. I'll show you afterwards. I have two water bottle pouches and I ditched the gas mask pouch, which why I will get into later. And in the back, I have this little double pouch. Now this double pouch, um, this double pouch in the back actually would belong onto the backpack, but um, it kind of just barely fits in there. The way it's mounted, it doesn't have those metal hooks that you saw before, but it has kind of like the gas mask carrier that we saw. It has those um, almost like molly straps that go around both the bottom and the side. And with that, you can kind of, you will see it afterwards, you can kind of loop it around the belt and the back straps and it holds on there. It's kind of floppy, but it holds. All right. And then um, the water bottle pouches are nothing special. And um, they're just water bottle pouches. They are, again, as before, they are not connected with any of the straps. So it doesn't matter if they're just on one side or the other. Now, with the magazine, magazine pouches, with the ammo pouches, I have four of them. And ideally, I would advise you to find another left and another right one. Because that way you can just um, put it at the correct side, where you, correct side where you need it. And you're good to go. Now, I found two more left ones, which uh, was an issue because um, I connected them in a way that the front strap is in the front pouches and the diagonal back strap uh, loops into the rear pouches. That way, ammo pouches get heavy when you fill them up, so that way all of them are supported. All right, um, now what I had to do with one of, with, uh, one of my left pouches is I had to um, take... Um, I had to take the um, diagonal connection loop and switch side, take it off and sew it on to the other side, that, that, uh, that it is at the correct orientation. As you can see, that's not ideal, but if you can borrow it from your friend, from your buddy especially, then you can just put it on there, take it back off and maybe give him yours as well. All right, so now let's get into the pouches and what's in there. Okay. All right, first of the water, pou water bottle pouches, Again, they're just water bottle pouches. There's nothing special about them. And um, of course, the issue water bottle fits in them. Now, um, I'm not that big of a fan of the hydration bladders, um, especially if you have a heavy backpack on, there's kind of a uh, danger that they may burst on you. Issue. But I'm still, if possible, I rather carry some kind of actually solid um, hydration option. So I carry two canteens with me. Again, this 0.75 or 0.8 liters of water is not enough for me. So what I usually carry are just bigger um, bottles. Now in here, I do have an Algene bottle with the cup. If I carry two bottles, I always carry one cup. I don't need two. I seriously, if I lose one cup, I will survive for a day. It's not gonna be that bad, but um, I, I want to have at least one with me. Um, this whole rig is not meant to be a sustainment rig. This is literally just supporting me in the fight or of course in the exercise, but I don't carry ungodly amounts of water or like survival stuff in here. This is literally just what I need in the fight and during, um, during pauses to actually um, go on. Now, the one liter Nalgene bottles, and again, some tape, and the one liter bottles, they fit perfectly fine in those pouches. They are um, a little bit iffy to get in, but without the cup, they were perfectly fine. Now, with the cup, especially with this one I have right here, um, it's a, it fits in there, but it's kind of like a little, it's kind of just annoying to get it in there by yourself. 
So what I usually do is carry one with carry one with them that I use just when I can take off the rig and just put them back in without issue and have one that I actually drink out of regularly that I can just fit in there easily without with cup. So let's just put that down here real quick. Now what's also fits in there nicely are the Finnish one liter um, canteens. I say as I almost struggle to take it back out. Those, they fit. Um, they work quite nicely. They, this one doesn't have like a NBC lid. Um, I don't know if the US issue one quart canteen actually fits in there. I don't own one, so I don't know. But if those fit, possibly the US one might, might fit as well. So you can also fit um, like regular PET uh, drinking bottles in there. That's no issue either. But um, that's usually how to do it. I usually just take two one liter Nalgene bottles and put them in there. That's just to show you what actually fits in that stuff there. Let's just... All right, that's the water bottle pouches. Now let's go down to the big double pouch in the back. Because I kind of want to look at you while I explain what I have in there, I'll just baby carry my rig real quick. All right, so what do I have in here? I have um, my, uh, my left pouch and my right pouch. In the left one, what I carry in there is kind of everything I kind of want to use when there's like a break in an exercise or we're somewhere in the woods, stuff like that. So what I carry in there is one spare sock. What? Well, um, change your socks, please change your fucking socks on the march. Wet socks suck, don't get trench foot. Now I carry one wheel with one meal with me. That can be different kinds. This can just be a can of chili, whatever we can get in the military. I have now here like this um, dried, uh, this uh, camping MRE kind of thing with me. I always carry a um, solid, like a German, uh, German solid fuel tap uh, cooker. Just um, not necessarily to cook with that, but just uh, if I am on, if it's raining, if it's cold, and I'm under a shelter, that I have something to give me a little bit of warmth, more for that than for anything else. Because you can eat MRE stuff, you can eat that cold, you don't need to make it warm. It's better if it's warm, but you really don't need to in, if you're in a hurry or anything. Then, of course, something to actually eat the food. <laughs> don't be that guy <laughs> who has no spoon and has to eat his food with his hands. That's fucking gross. Don't be that guy. And then the last thing I have in here is my poncho and line kit. Um, it's not necessarily my main rain protection. I usually I wear Gore-Tex for that, if it's really raining heavily. But that way I have at least an emergency um, rain cover if it's just surprising. Especially if you're up in the mountains, weather can change quickly. And you don't see much of the horizon, so it's hard to predict if the weather is approaching or not. So. I always carry that in there with the line kit that I need to make a emergency shelter with it. All right, and what I currently don't have in here, but the, what I usually carry in there is um, like some l four very lightweight um, tent packs that I can use to um, fix uh, the shelter. I think I think that's just more uh, usable, especially when you're up in the mountain. Sometimes you don't have trees, so you can just find a little tall bush to make it a little to put it up in, um, in one corner, making kind of like a ranger diamond, and then you don't have to tie it down somewhere else, so you can just put the 10 packs in the ground. All right, so put that stuff back in there. And there's still some room left, so um, sometimes if I have like some snacks or something with me, I can put that down there as well, that's no issue. Now, obviously, if you do have access to MREs in the Swiss military, that's not really that common to get um, those prepared meals. Sometimes you get them, but um, the thing is they're quite expensive <laughs> and in the Swiss military um, At least in the moment and in the time I was um, in training um, You have a daily budget per person of about eight bucks for the food and that's three meals eight bucks with like uh, One of those camping meals that cost like 12 to 15 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> that's not happening so usually we have to like either get a can of like chili con carne or something or we just get um, noodles just dry noodles, water, and a bit of salt, and that's uh, that's quite common. That's how we, usually how we have to eat in the field. Now, um, in my right pouch, in here, I carry just stuff to um, maintain my gear and my weapons. So, and that also that kind of depends at the end on what weapon system you carry. Of course, when you use that rig, in not in, when you're not in the Swiss military and you can choose your weapon system, then you can. I would probably put in a little spare parts kit as well. Then I might like strip down a rifle cleaning kit and so on. If you're machine gunner, of course, the machine gun tools, you need that stuff. 
Now, I carry currently the cleaning cleaning kit roll for the Stone Gebe 90 in there. That's just to demonstrate the purpose of it. And the other thing I ca always carry in there is my little field kit. In here are um, power cord, more duct tape, extra lighters, super glue, water purification tablets, fuel start, like uh, fire starters and stuff like that. Just and um, everything I need to repair some of my uniform, some stuff on my kit brakes. Just it's not a survival kit or anything like that. It's just to um, keep keep my stuff running, my stuff working, if I can't run to my backpack or to the vehicle or something. That's what I carry in there. And there's plenty of room left if I have like laser, if I have range finders or binos or anything like that, I can still put that in there, no problem at all. So, and that's the double bags. And as you can see, as I'm, that's the issue with them not having any structure in them. It's kind of sometimes, especially with the double bags, it's a little issue to get the flaps closed properly and close them back up. So for the double bags in specific you have um, here you can see it kind of as I push it up a little bit they kind of hold on to it with those little bottom straps and the sideways strap in the, in the top but they're riding up a little higher than the other pouches so if you have a large backpack with you they could possibly possibly push down on it. You need to check how you adjust your rig in that case but um it holds on, it's a little floppy, but it just about works. Now for the fun part, and that's probably the reason why most of you are watching, the ammo pouches. What I carry in there and what can they carry? Well, first off, of course, I carry magazines in them, but my back right pouch, I usually keep that empty for smokes, hand grenades, stuff like that. Obviously, right now, I'm not in service right now, so I don't have access to hand grenades to show that. But what I do have is um, to kind of showcase the space you have in there is a little IFAC insert. That's a Vile Silica IFAC insert for magazine pouches. And that's actually, it's, it's not big, but um, it fits without a tourniquet on the side. It fits into a um, AK magazine pouch perfectly fine without any issue. And you carry quite a bit. Um, right now, um, the Swiss military doesn't issue IFACs. They issue a bandage and a tourniquet. And um, usually the bandage is carried in the in the arm pocket that you have on the left side, and the tourniquet is usually in a left in a leg pocket. Now, if I my private IFAC, I would carry that in a leg pocket if I wear something like that, because I want to keep the stuff up here free for my actual fighting load, and have my IFAC always with me. So I would probably put it in a leg pocket. But just to showcase, that's. That fits in there perfectly fine. That's also my everyday carry IFAC that I put in my um, in my satchel that I carry to work on my daily commute. That way I always have something with me if something would happen. Yeah. Now the magazine pouches. What fits in there? Well, let's start off with the obvious. It does fit Shonkwe 90 Max. Of course, the 20s you have seen those, how they fit in there. But here, um, 30 rounds fit in there perfectly fine. Four of them. If you carry them in American style, meaning um, project, uh, projectiles of the rounds pointing at you, at your body, you can, yeah. Again, no structure, so it's kind of a little bitch to get that stuff in there. But you can carry four mags pretty easily. They're easy to get out. They're easy, relatively easy to put back in if you have some time and not looking at the camera. But um. You can also fit a um, couple together 30 rounds in there, it works. Um, it's just three of them is better, four of them just about fit in there, but it's just a bitch to get out. So if you couple them, I would say three, and those without locking tabs, four works perfectly fine. Now if 550 magazines work, what also works are Pmax, L15 Max work perfectly fine. Again, American style carry, protect projectile towards the body. Four of them fit in there, no issue at all. So, meaning if you carry 5.56 five, assault rifles, you're pretty much good to go with four, eight, 12 magazines. That's a lot of rounds. <laughs> now, as you heard, what fits in here? Well, if you're a Giga Chat, that's important information to you. It fits Sturmgewehr 57 mags. Those are 24 rounds of 7.5 by 55 Swiss, GP11. That round is larger than 308, I don't have any like 308 there also anything so I don't have any magazines for it to showcase that but it's a uh, rockin lockback magazine 
or lock-in rock back, sorry. Kind of like an AK. 24 rounds of those. It's kind of the largest magazine I have. Three of them fit in here, no problem. So it will easily fit um, 20 or 25 round Magpul AR-10 Max. Again, three, six, nine battle rifle magazines. That's a lot of ammo. Well, now you may perhaps wonder, but Brody, where's your gas mask? What if there's an NBC friend? How do you do that? Well, quite easy. I, I dumped the gas mask carry because it's kind of shitty. And I carry my gas mask, or I would carry my gas mask where it belongs. Not on my fighting load, but on person. And I do that by carrying a separate gas mask bag. You can get them super cheap for surplus. This is a British one, cost me like 25 bucks at most. You can get Swiss surplus pouches. They are also this uh, rubberized fabric. They're a little thicker than those, but they're waterproof and they're like 10, 15 bucks at most. And they're easy to find. You can sling them around your body, underneath the rig, loop them around your leg, and you always have your gas mask with you where it belongs. All right, that was the first episode of the Rifleman's Corner on the GTA 90, the Swiss load bearing equipment. If you have questions about this rig or anything in carrying them, please let me know in the comments. If you have one as well and you have different modifications to it, please let me know, write in the comments, what did you do to make it better? Now, thank you very much for watching and see you next time for the next Rifleman's Corner or another match video. See you around.